Hey everybody, welcome to Inbound Now, episode 3. I'm joined here today with a very special guest, Mr. John Hayden. John runs a company called Inbound Zombie. They're a social media strategy firm uh, focusing on helping small businesses and nonprofits with their social media strategy. Um, he also does a lot of online campaign uh, fundraising development. And he, he really knows a lot and can dig really deep into helping small businesses and nonprofits with their Facebook strategies. So thanks for coming on the show, John. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you made it in the uh, snow. I saw you walk in this morning. Right, right, yes. So, you know, a little backstory. Me and John recorded this on Monday, and my computer crashed, my PC. So now I'm recording on a Mac. I may be converted now. I don't know. But thanks for doing it again. Round two is going to be awesome. So. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. So I wanted to get you on the show today to talk um, a little bit about how you built your business. You, you built your business through uh, blogging and inbound marketing. We're going to talk a little bit about that, then jump into um, Facebook uh, fan page strategy, what businesses should really be focusing on to grow their, their Facebook fan page reach and yep. the best practices there. Um, we'll, we'll dive into some further resources where they can really get to the nitty gritty of how to do this stuff. And then while this is inbound now, um, and we talk about what's currently happening, we also like to you know, skate to where the puck is going. So we're gonna get your insights on where you see things moving into the future, mm -hmm. and just you know, get some insight into what we should be looking out for in this new year of 2011. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Sounds great. All right, okay. so let's jump into it. So you started your business um, through your blog and using other, you know, social media and other inbound marketing tactics, how did you, how did you do it? Could you kind of walk us through the process? Yeah, um, <clears throat> basically, I mean, this is something that I've worked on for a couple of years, and I the first th thing that I did was that I decide I found out uh, through reading a couple of books and just doing some research online, you know, a few years ago that you know that, that people are actually legitimately making a, a living. Um, with blogging, you know, and, and I'm saying, you know, generating awareness, c c capturing leads and so forth or whatever their business model is. So uh, my first step is uh, I had to ask myself, what do I want to blog about? And and I had to pick something that I was going to be happy with that I could do literally till the day I die, okay? Right. Otherwise, there's no reason to do it, right? So um, I eventually settled on um, <clears throat> doing marketing for nonprofits and um, the, so I decided to do some research in that niche as well. Who else is blogging about this? What are they talking about? How much traffic are they getting? What are the topics? Um, you know, what's their style and so forth? Who's their audience? Right. And then I decided to narrow the niche a little bit further and talk about specifically um, using the web, you know, marketing on the web. Uh, I found that there was a huge gap. There were people talking about strategies and big ideas, but nobody was really getting down to the tactics, like how to do stuff. Nonprofits, I felt, needed to see that. I did further research, research launched the blog, and then it took off from there. Um, and I did a few other things that were that kind of propelled things even further. But the blog, even till today, that was about three years ago. Till today, the blog is like literally my number one tool that I use to get business. Right, right. So, and you said when you started, you just said you just started hammering away three posts a week consistently mm -hmm. for those three years. That's a lot of content, man. So yep. you you have to be reaping the benefits of you know all the SEO that's coming from that. So what mm -hmm. what results have you seen? Well, um, I, my site actually did a little. Um, you know how you, uh, you have that um, grader HubSpot grader, right? Right. So I use that tool. I actually have about I think either six or nine thousand inbound links to my blog. Okay, like that's a lot of links, inbound links, and that helps me rise up to the top on Google. If you go to Google and you type on type nonprofit marketing for Facebook, you know, with Facebook or using WordPress for nonprofits marketing, those those keywords. I'm on page one. Right, and, and you kind of I, dominate those top you know, rankings, right? And that's all yeah. through your blogging and you know, creating that remarkable content. And so yeah, kudos yeah. to you. I mean, you're like a real life success story of this stuff working for you. Mm. And, and that's driving those inbound leads. Um, another thing you said, you know, so half of your business probably comes from search, and then the other half comes from social media. So what kind mm -hmm. of things have, have you been doing within social media to grow your business? 
Uh, so, so the blog itself is a social media medium, okay? Um, and so I put stuff out there, people comment on it, I reply back to them, and I can have a discussion in the comment section. So that way people get to know me. Oh, what is John? You know, John's actually a person behind this website. He'll listen to me. Um, and then additionally, I've used uh, Facebook. I have a Facebook page. I've used Twitter as well. Um, Twitter um, used to be real, used to give me a lot of traffic. Um, what I've found over the years is that Facebook is a little bit more effective. Um, Twitter gets Twitter is like this big ADD type of social medium where people just click on links and pass it all over the place. So the bounce rate that I was getting on my website from Twitter was a lot higher. With Facebook, it was a little bit more focused because they were coming mainly through uh, my Facebook page. Right, so. right. I would agree. Twitter is kind of more ADD. Um, it's, I, I think it's faster to connect directly with people. But um, I think there's more of an opportunity to use, you know, your Facebook uh, presence for, for that conversation, that threaded conversation. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I look at it. It's interesting. Like when you think about Facebook versus Twitter, right? Like what's the difference? To me, the difference is Twitter is about the conversation and talking to people almost real time. Okay. Whereas Facebook, that's Twitter. Facebook is more like the community itself. Like it's based on connections. Whereas, again, Twitter's more based on replies and what people say to each other, whereas Facebook is based on the actual network itself. Right, right. There's a, there's a difference in how you would use them. So, and, 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 you know, businesses are starting to realize, oh, hey, there's 600 million plus people on Facebook. Maybe we should, uh, you know, take a look at that. Maybe we should start yeah, that, yeah. you know. So, yep. what are... So what are some of the things you see when, when, the, when businesses or, or nonprofits are jumping into social media or jumping into Facebook specifically, hmm. what are they getting wrong? Uh, well, they, um, <clears throat> I think the, the biggest thing is a paradigm issue. Okay, It's like the way that they're looking at it. They see 600 million people using Facebook. So they think, oh, wow, this is like a free huge email list that I can just put stuff out to and hopefully something will stick. If I just have a presence there, something's going to happen. But beyond that, they really don't have much more of a str That's basically the, the strategy, the most common strategy is just get a presence, figure out what to do. But um, not much more to it than that. But little do they know that there is a, a, a community of actual real living beings on Facebook that like to share stuff, okay? 50% uh, of these 60, 600 million users, 50% of them are daily active users. They, they show up every day. They show up for a minimum of 30 minutes every single day using Facebook. And what do they do? They share photos. They talk about what they're doing. They recommend movies. They talk about what they're doing at a restaurant. They do a lot of stuff. So it's important to understand the culture of Facebook before you just jump on and start putting your stuff out there. You have to understand how that that world works and what the native language is so that you can have people naturally accept you and then share what you have to say. Right, right. And you know, a lot of businesses are using it as kind of a glorified RSS feed, just <laughs> excuse me, mm. auto feeding their, their blog posts to their Facebook wall, you know, or, or you know, putting offers and just it's not really what Facebook's for. Like, the, like, like you mentioned, people are sharing, you know, the content, photos, stuff that's funny, funny videos. Like, so that's kind of like what businesses should be creating that remarkable content that will spread, you know, organically, not you know, sending out offers or just auto posting their blog, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the most successful brands are the ones that have been able to create a situation where either. Customers engage with each other. They're having like little conversations on the wall, or they're connecting with the brand itself, and the brand is actually replying back to them and 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 talking to them. Right, right. So, so what are some of the the, the examples of of a company that you've seen that's just killing it on Facebook? Mm. Well, again, I work mainly with nonprofits, so I can think of um, I mean ones that I look to would be the Red Cross. The Red Cross is excellent. Um, in fact, the interesting thing about the Red Cross is that they are uh, almost like a thought leader in the social media world, at least in the nonprofit marketing world. And they're a very traditional organization, you know, very, very traditional. And so for them to go from being very traditional and almost like we don't want to touch the internet to being a thought leader in on Facebook and on Twitter, it's, it's a pretty, um, they've come pretty far in a very quick time. So kudos to them. They should be an organization to check out. Um, recently, I mean, you've probably seen the Haynes 
um, sock a promotion that happened just before Christmas this last year right. where Haynes said, hey, we're going to give away, I think it was like 500,000 socks to the Salvation Army. Okay, All you have to do is just go click the thing, I want to share a sock, you know, give a sock to the Salvation Army, you do it one mouse click, that's it. So what it does is it does good, it did something good, but it also enhanced the brand of Haynes. And how much does 500,000 socks cost them to be able to do that in the environment of Facebook? That's cheap. For a brand like that, so I think it was a smart move. Um, and then smaller organizations. One that I really like is, is an organization called Kids Are Heroes, um, and that um, those guys just have a really solid community on Facebook. People, um, you know, sharing stories about other children who are doing really good stuff in the world, that type of thing. Uh, there's a local organization in Massachusetts called the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. And they have a situation where the fan base are, they have that taken over the page. So the, the admin can barely get a word in edgewise. Meanwhile, their um, supporters are just talking about stories like, hey, I had a, you know, I found out I had an aneurysm. Here's what happened. And people are really supporting each other. And that was their goal. They wanted to create that. You know, they right, wanted to create right. that. You, you definitely want to see that organic growth. And there's some ways to do that. You know, instead of just auto posting from your blog, you know, you post content behind the scenes stuff that only your Facebook fan page uh, fans can see. And mm. then, you know, posing it in a way that evokes emotion or a response, like as asking a question. And then, because yeah. everyone has an opinion and they're gonna toss it in there and it's just gonna grow from that organically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you mentioned it earlier, like the auto posting thing, like a glorified RSS feed, just posting the same stuff that you post everywhere else. Um, <clears throat> usually, uh, what I've seen in my experience is that the organizations that are successful are the ones that actually have a very specific plan for Facebook. And they say, this is what we're going to offer on Facebook. This is the discussion that we're going to have happen on Facebook. This is the content we're going to have on Facebook. These are the events, the activities, and all this. You're not going to find it anywhere else. So what that does is that it automatically creates a situation where people like the page because guess what? It makes sense to them. I'm going to get this if I click this button right here. I'm going to like the page. I'm going to opt into this type of stuff. And if I want to get something else that they have in their email list, I'll join that too. Okay, right, right. but but duplicating the channels just with the same stuff doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not that effective, right? Because you know people want to consume the the information the way they want to, and it, if you're just posting the same thing everywhere, it's just going to be it's going to start looking like spam. They're going to be like, oh, okay, and they'll they'll basically hide your page. Mm -hmm. So that's something you don't want to happen. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so speaking of you know fan pages and and growing your fan base. What are some, some of the best ways that you've seen to kind of acquire new fans and grow the reach of your Facebook uh, page? Okay. So the first one is um, to use existing assets like, um, you know, if you have a huge direct mail um, base, okay, come up with a direct mail campaign where you can you send out a direct mail piece and say, this, you know, this is what we're doing on Facebook and make it really creative so it's compelling and people make that effort to actually go to the Facebook page. Um, they could. People also might have a huge email list. They have no Facebook fans, but they might have a huge email list. So they can simply write a super compelling email. The subject line is the most important thing, so that people read it, and then um, explain to people what they're going to get on Facebook. They're not going to get it anywhere else, but this is what's happening on Facebook, and it. To, they can dovetail that with an event. Okay, so let's say that they launch the Facebook page, then they send out an email about all this cool stuff that's going to happen, including a great event next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. There's going to be a special chat with someone cool, at, and you can ask all your questions and get them answered, okay? That's been really, those those kind of strategies have been pretty effective. Right, right. That's something that um, Social Media Examiner does, right? Where they, yep. you know, at Tuesday at, at, at 3 p.m., so and so is going to be on to have a live Facebook discussion, and they've yeah, seen yeah. a lot of growth out of that. Yeah, and actually, um, I work with an organization, Charity How To. We partner together and we put together webinars. We often do free webinars, right? And we used to just answer questions during the webinars, but now what we do is we short, we keep the webinar short, maybe half an hour, forty-five minutes. So these are the free ones, and we say, hey, if you have any questions, ask them on the Facebook page. John will follow up later, and then I just answer all the questions. Huge spike in fan growth, like really easy strategy. Right, right, and, and another another page that I've seen doing it is the Jake and Amir page from College Humor, where they give oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the the basically the bloopers of all the videos that they make. They put the mm -hmm. bloopers. 
for only their Facebook fan pages. And I think, oh, you know, man. watching bloopers, it's it's even funnier than their funny videos. So yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah. way. And they've seen exponential growth with that. Um, yeah. But see, that's smart. That's smart because guess what? You're not going to get the bloopers anywhere else, right? And that, that gives someone – Facebook page – you know, Facebook users are smart. You know, they 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 have a choice. They don't have to like your page, right? But if you give them something that's interesting like that, that's a perfect example. Let's put our bloopers on Facebook nowhere else. Great. That's a reason to like the page. Awesome. I like bloopers. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think consistency on updating that content is also important, you know? To yeah, keep people yeah. like kind of in, in that mode of receiving that exclusive content so they remember why you joined. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so when you're creating a page, um, you know you have your, your 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 business just set up a Facebook fan page. What can they do to really pimp it out and, and make it the best, mm. as optimized as possible for people landing on it? Okay, um, the first thing is to be careful about the page name. And by the way, you can change the page name up until you have like a hundred fans. Okay. Right. So, you know, if your company is something like Sunflower, which less, doesn't say anything to me, okay? But if it's like Sunflower, we make great brownies. You know, we make we bake great brownies. And I'm just making this up. Right. But the page name has to have something that actually says what the business is so that, um, so that people can recognize that. And if it's relevant to them, they might investigate it, okay? Because in nine times out of ten, the page name is really what's getting spread around Facebook, you know? David just made a comment on the Sunflower We Make Great Brownies page, okay? Um, oh, I like brownies. That's cool. What is David saying? I mean, that, that's really, you know, that's one thing. And then, you know, it's really a smart idea to create a custom tab, all right? So you can get a static FBML application, which is free, added to your page, Find somebody who knows a little bit of HTML and make a custom tab with a, a, a compelling image and a call to action to like the page, preferably bullet points like this is what you're going to get if you like our page and make it attractive. And um, <clears throat> Brand Glue actually did a study where they found that uh, pages with a custom tab were 20% more likely to convert a fan than a page that didn't have a custom tab. So that's almost an imperative is to have a welcome tab for a brand new person first impressions last right right because you know in, in the settings you can set it up so that custom tab shows up if they haven't liked your page yet if they're just yeah. you know landing on their wall yeah they can see some of the stuff you're updating but with that custom tab with the call to action you know maybe even adding a, a, a YouTube video to kind of explain what the mm -hmm. page is about or what your company is about um, another mm -hmm. great thing that I've seen in, in custom tabs is adding in you know a, a form for them to sign up for your email newsletter it's a great mm. way to grow your list that way. Um, yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot of cool things, and, and like you said, make it pretty. You know, if it, yep. if it looks ugly, it's kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. It kind of turns yeah, the other thing you can do is you can uh, you can you can give something away in exchange for liking the page. Okay, and and Facebook has this functionality with FBML. You can, where you can hide content, and then display it all of a sudden when someone likes the page. So that's almost like um, you know with the brownie comp, you know the brownie company. Let's stay with that. Um, last time we used hiking shoes, <laughs> um, but um, but with the browning company, you know, hey, if you like our page, we're going to give you a coupon off a bunch of brownies, or we'll give you a, a, our best recipes, or something like that. Something that people could use. Right, right. And that's definitely you know, it, it, that's that's a little more advanced hiding the stuff from people, but yeah. it's something once you get you know your custom tab set up, it's something to start thinking about uh, yep. in, in your Facebook content strategy. So, mm. so what um, apps have you found that are like majorly useful for uh, Facebook fan pages? Uh, okay, static FBML is good. All right, that's a basic one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, events application. So, if you're doing, if you are either doing webinars or if you have um, in store, like you know, um, promotions or something like that, you know, create an event. Use the event application on your page to promote that. Uh, the wall, I think, is actually one of the best applications ever. Like everyone ignores that. Like what's going on at the wall? But um, <clears throat> that's really powerful because the more that you can connect with the fans and get them all fired up over interesting stuff, the more that more awareness you're going to spread throughout Facebook and increased engagement always it always leads to fan growth. Fan growth kind of. Uh, feeds that engagement a little bit more. Right, right. Um, and then one of, one of the things with the walls that that people miss is using the at the the at symbol oh, on yeah, your yeah. keyboard, kind of like in Twitter when you're adding somebody. But you can do it in Facebook, and that'll tag 
that person or that other fan page. And it's a mm-hmm. great way, you know, if you're if you're writing about, you know, that person, it'll it'll basically show up on their wall as well. And yep. you know, use this don't spam people, you know, we talked about that last time. Don't spam people with this method, but yeah. if you are talking about someone else, let them know. And yep. they're gonna, you know, it's basically building that relationship with that other person that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, yeah. It's all about doing this thing that no one expects, okay? You know, and in the nonprofit world there's a lot of competition because they're all chewing on the same grants. Okay. So they don't want to we don't want to we're the Red Cross. We don't want to promote, you know, the um you, you know United Way. Uh, we're not gonna you know <clears throat> but they, they really need to get in the habit of like promoting each other. Like, hey, you know, the Red Cross could say the United Way is doing great work in Haiti. You know, everybody we should all support them. Like right, wouldn't that right. be wouldn't that be a remarkable for them to do that? That would differentiate them clearly from the norm, which is to be so competitive and, and insular. You know? Absolutely. And you know, another another useful one, uh, the video and you know, the built in video app, you know, if you're posting stuff to your fan page. You can use YouTube, but you can do it right through uh, Facebook as well. Uh, I mm-hmm. found it very useful. You can like that video mm-hmm. when it pops up. It's just right there, really yep. easy for people to do it. Um, if you're thinking about sharing audio through your page, there's a, a site called audioboo.fm, and these will all be in the show notes. But mm-hmm. uh, basically, it, it, it enables you to uh, record audio and then post it directly to your Facebook fan page. So if you're doing you know, mm-hmm. audio tips on this or that, um, you can kind of keep people engaged that way. Mm, yeah, App, Be- App Bistro is another resource for um, Facebook page applications, App Bistro. And that's basically like a clearinghouse for Facebook page apps where you can go and you can select a category and, oh, yeah, I want to run a coupon thing or I want to do a Groupon type of situation. You could find applications. Some of them are free. Some of them are paid. But then you can at least they filter it for you so that you can get the good stuff. Right, right. And then, you know, one of the things that people uh, overlook a lot, every, a lot of people have smartphones now, like the market penetration of smartphones is growing, growing, growing. And it's mm-hmm. going to, you know, everyone's going to have one within, I don't know, two years. But yep. one of the things that I like to do is I'll, I'll be in a, a live event. I'll take a picture and, and on every single fan page, they give you a custom email address to email pictures to your fan page. So I don't know if you can do this directly through Facebook apps uh, like the iPhone app or the Android app. I don't know if you can post to fan pages, but using that email uh, address can like make updating a breeze. So that's oh, yeah, something I yeah. found majorly useful. You could do a status update. You could do video. You could do photos. Right. I mean, right. it's really it's very very simple. Like any, you don't have to have it, even an iPhone. You can have an ugly BlackBerry that just has email and everything else is broken on it. You could just take a photo. Send it by email. You're golden. You know? Exactly. So, so what are some tools um, that you found really useful to kind of streamline um, updating through Facebook? Yeah, I actually like using Facebook itself. Like, just go to Facebook.com because that's the environment that everybody's in anyhow for the most part. Either that or their mobile phone, like the iPhone. Okay, so I use either just use the Facebook page or my iPhone because that's what everybody else uses. And I, it's important to me to see what their experience is going to be. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, the other one is Hootsuite, okay? And what I like about Hootsuite is that you can, you know, you can do Twitter and you could do Facebook and you could do even LinkedIn and Foursquare. I don't know why you would do Foursquare from your desktop, <laughs> but um, um, you know, you can do all these things at once, and you can even schedule updates on Facebook, and you can even post to multiple Facebook pages. So right. that's a that's a pretty powerful um, that's a pretty powerful application that has a desktop version and an i uh, a phone version. Right, right. So I, I think Hootsuite is I use it every day. It's awesome. Um, you know, TweetDeck is another one that's very yeah. similar to Hootsuite. Um, uh, so another thing that I would recommend uh, to people out there watching is using uh, bookmarklets, where it's just like a bookmark you drag up to your bookmarks bar, where you can you know you're on a blog post, you're like, wow, this is great. I should share this on my Facebook fan page instead of copying that yeah. URL. Going to Facebook, putting it in. You can just click that. There's also browser plugins that do this. I think one's called Shareaholic, but it's mm. it's basically I tell people th- this is socializing your browser, making it completely easy and and efficient to update those you know your social networks. So yeah, yeah, something yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. And um, <clears throat> you know the other thing I could think of is um, is is if you have a blog for your business, which all the HubSpot people and viewers should really have a blog, right? <laughs> Um, so if you have a blog, you could just hook up the RSS feed onto your Facebook page, and then you know you'll find that people are on your wall and they're commenting about it. You know, right, right. So, yeah. But but regardless of all this automation, okay, 
<clears throat> you know, all this automation, all these cool tools, right? It's, I think it's imperative for Facebook page admins or marketers to show up on their page once a day and look at it and see what's going on and be there as a person, okay? Because guess what? You will never, never, ever automate um, in true engagement. Engagement means there's a person on the other side of this website and I feel like I'm being heard. You will never automate that because right, guess right. what? You, the users will catch on. They will know. Oh, this is just some bot doing this thing. They'll know it. Right, and right. So like, it's important to be present. <clears throat> you know, having a Facebook presence yeah. doesn't mean that, you know, you're you're present there. You need to be there kind of watching, see seeing the, the interactions happening. Because you're right. Yeah. It's people talking to people. It's not it shouldn't be automated. You mm. know, some of these tools, they allow you to do that and that can be, you know, bad if that's all you do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are some of your favorite um, resources to to kind of keep in in touch with what's going on in Facebook and and what you should be looking out for? Uh, well, well, um, Dan Zarell is coming out with a book. It's already out. It's on Amazon. It's called hey, the Facebook it's Marketing book. book or something like that. Facebook Marketing Book. Um, so he's got that. Uh, the Facebook Marketing Bible is at um, a website called Inside Facebook. Inside Facebook is, I think, one of the best resources. Um, Social Media Examiner is another website that has great, great stuff on really any everything social media, but a lot of Facebook stuff. Um, Mari Smith writes for that, um, and I think those are the really the best resources out there. Right, um, right. They're, they're, yeah, okay. you know, they're webinars one that I too. would add into the mix is um, when you're thinking about <clears throat> your custom Facebook uh, tab and landing page, and you can set up multiple custom tabs to do yep. a lot of stuff. For inspiration on that, check out. Uh, facebookshowcase.net and it just has mm. some really awesome well designed uh, user friendly um, uh, tabs there custom tabs yeah. that you can kind of take a look at and be like wow that would be great and then it's mm. just that it, FBML is the same thing as, as HTML so get your designer mm. uh, or, or you know do it yourself you know yeah 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 and hyper arts too yeah hyper arts yeah yeah hyper hyper arts dot com it's like that's the face that's the free online FBML Bible, basically. Right. They have they have a bunch of code samples. So if you're not a coder, you know they lay it out for you. You copy and paste, change the you know image, and change the where it's pointing, and and you're good to go. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So coming up in 2011, where do you see things going? Um, I think where and here I am getting my crystal ball out. Um, I think what's happened is that um, a lot of brand and, and I see this with nonprofits. Um, you know, people get on the Facebook wagon, they have a page, oh, we're on Facebook, we got the cool custom tab and all this stuff, and then they get a whole bunch of fans, and guess what? They start flatlining, okay? Their page goes silent, nothing's happening, what are we doing? Then they realize, like, oh, we actually don't know what we're doing. So um, I think what you'll see is that there's going to be a lot more focus on, like, developing a str strategies and methods, like a methodology almost for effective use of Facebook, okay, so that they can actually get the return. Like, why are you on Facebook as a business anyhow? You want to make money, you want to get customers, you want to spread the word about your business, right? If that, you, you need to know that that's happening, and how can you do that? You have to measure it. So I think in the, in the next year, you'll see, you know, ways, much more effective ways and best practices to measure what you're doing on Facebook. So that it's, it's more like like email marketing when it was new. People didn't know what the heck's going on. Now there are proven best practices for email marketing. Same thing is going to happen with Facebook. The other thing I think is going to happen is um, uh, Facebook Places. We're, we'll see a lot of really cool stuff happening with Facebook Places, which no one, no businesses are hardly even using it. Like I think only Starbucks is using it, <laughs> you know. Um, and and that's a really powerful uh, location-based marketing service. It's, it's and it's un, totally underutilized. So I think by the end of this year, you're going to see some really great case studies for Facebook Facebook places. So right, right. Yeah. I think I think uh, you know geolocation you know services will kind of uh, rise this year, um, and and more brick and mortars will adopt it, it as a strategy because it's basically mm -hmm. like a free loyalty program with a lot of these things. Yep. And just yep. utilizing those, I think, will be awesome. And then, and then, like you said, re, revamping your Facebook strategy. Like, why are you there? You like, yeah, mm -hmm. you may be posting status updates, and you're not seeing any return. You know, one of the main things with a Facebook fan page, 
you want to get people back to your site. That's yep. like one of the main like goals in my mind. Um, you know, there's other things that you can work on, but think about how you can grab people's attention and then kind of bring them back into your website and then convert mm -hmm. them into you know a lead or you know, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the other thing, I mean, this is this is this will be huge too. Like e-commerce, right? So e-commerce applications are coming out like out of the woodwork for Facebook pages. So now you know, brands and small businesses, retail outlets, if they sell anything online, they're going to set up an e-commerce application right in their Facebook page. So they don't, people won't go to their website. Because honestly, I don't think Facebook, Facebook users like to stay on Facebook. They don't want to go to some website. So you need to have a complete version of your website within your Facebook page. And if you want to get money from people, you have to do e an e-commerce app. And I think that's going to be, that's going to be another huge thing for Facebook this year. This is, is Use of e-commerce applications is going to be uh, prevalent. Cool, cool. So, 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 John, where can people find you online? Uh, well, you can go to facebook.com forward slash inbound zombie, and I'm sure you'll include the link below. And then on Twitter, it'll be um, at uh, John Hayden, just at John Hayden, and that's it. Okay, cool. Well, I, I appreciate your time coming on the show and sharing all of your Facebook insights. I think it was really helpful, and there was some great stuff in this interview.